What's up guys, Sean here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do the Spyderco Shaman Skinny Mod on some factory G10 Shaman scales. So you can see this is the standard handle shape right here, has this hump in the center. And then right here, I have some skinny scales. So you can see right here, hump, no hump. And, and right here, as you can see, I already did this one ahead of time and I need to finish this one. So it's not gonna be a complete process, but I'm gonna show you guys what you need to know to do this fairly easy. So um, I'm pretty confident this is something that just about anybody can do. And I'm excited to show you guys how to do it. All right guys, so first things first, there's gonna be some tools and items that you will need to complete this process. One that I highly recommend is a little file like this one. Well, not so little, but um, it is a hand file nonetheless. So it does not cut through the G10 very quickly, but it cuts through effectively and it doesn't cut so fast that you're liable to make a mistake that can't be corrected. Little sanding blocks like this, between all this stuff, that should do the job. Um, I have partially used a Dremel for it before. Uh, I know what you're thinking, why don't you just use the Dremel? That'll be quicker, easier, etc., etc. Well, that's not actually the case, and the Dremel can actually make your job a little bit more difficult because of the diameter of this drum, you're going to, uh, it, it tends to leave a lot of uneven patches, okay? Unless you are a very, very experienced Dremel user. I mean, I use Dremel all the time and regardless, it's still gonna be difficult to remove that hump and have everything completely perfect um, versus using the file, this file right here, makes it super, super easy. You just hold the scale in your hand like this and you run back and forth across it like that. And that's gonna grind it down just in that hump until it is ground down to essentially what we have right here. And once the hump is ground down, then you're gonna wanna use the sandpaper or the sanding sponges to kind of redo the contour because your your contour is going to be off um, how, how it you know contours around here once you grind this hump down you're no longer going to have that so you have to recreate that which sounds intimidating but it's not it's actually super easy so let's get right into it the main thing that you want to pay attention to is your liner pocket, okay? So this area that the liner sits inside of, you do not want to grind down past the, the lip of the scale that holds the liner in place. So I have the inside lip here marked with a Sharpie and these scales are translucent, so I can see when I'm getting close to where I need to be. Uh, obviously, we don't wanna completely remove the black or grind down past where I can see the line through here or else we will be through the pocket. So, uh, and then once you're finished, you can remove that Sharpie with some 91% alcohol and a rag. But um, yeah. I'm gonna check the camera view, make sure that this looks all right, and then we'll get into it. I might make some adjustments, and then, yeah, I will get to it. Show you guys how I do it. I mean, there's a million ways to do everything, guys, but out of all the tools I have available and all the methods that I've previously done, I'm gonna show you guys what I find to be the easiest and the safest and uh you know just just seems to work the best for me 
Okay, guys, another thing that I'm going to point out real quick that you can do if you desire might make it easier for some people. You can actually put the scales together and zip tie them together. You know what? Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. I've done this enough times that I'm comfortable doing them one at a time and I'm confident I can get them even. But if you zip tie them together, this is kind of a, more of a guaranteed way to ensure that you get them exactly the same. Little pliers, hold these exactly um, even together. Now, even with the zip ties all the way tight, they will be able to move a little bit, but it, it's very helpful still. When you're going to double check to make sure everything's perfectly lined up, you just line it up at the bottom, the front and the back, and then you take a look. So right here, we can see exactly what we have left to grind away. This is one that's already done. You can see right here where we need to finish grinding. So what I'm going to use for that, for the bulk of it, is this file like I showed you guys. This can be messy and you do not want to breathe in this stuff. So um, that's another reason I use the file. If you use the Dremel, it's going to kick up all the dust and you're definitely going to wear, you're definitely going to want to wear a respirator. However, I don't really want to wear a respirator, so this should be fine. As long as it's not kicking up dust, I shouldn't have any issues. And all right, so the final method, like I said, is a little bit slower, but it's safer because you're not going to accidentally grind away too much. Uh, for those of you who want to use a Dremel, I'll show you how to do that real quick. You're going you're gonna to want to keep the Dremel moving. Mm -hmm turn the speed down so it doesn't kick up as much. You wanna keep the Dremel moving. You never wanna sit still in one spot. That's how you get uneven uh, dips and grooves. using my finger as a guard so I can't slip off and mess up the face of the scale.
pours, all you gotta do is, as you're going back and forth like this, you just start tilting the scale. Keep it leaned over a little bit to help bring back that contour. And you want to keep uh, stopping throughout, knock off the dust, and check and see where you're at. And if you want to move a lot quickly with the file, I like tilt it up a little bit like that and use the corner of it. That actually seems more aggressive. guys so we are almost even have a little hump to get right there and then we will finish contouring by hand so there's the dremel Ugh. put my shirt up So next thing we're gonna do is take a sanded sponge. Now that we have it pretty even, take the skinny end, let's go like this over the top. Then you should be able to see a little bit better what you're working with. Looking good. So to contour it, I said, while you're sanding, you're just gonna go back and forth like that.
putting that contour back in it is going to keep these super comfortable. Now, don't need to do anything too extreme, but you definitely want to at least kind of chamfer the edges to get that nice round ergonomic feel back. All right, guys, I think we have it there. That looks pretty perfect to me. Oh yeah, that feels really freaking good. All right, guys. So from there, I mean, that's all you really need to do. You could call it complete at this point, but to really give these a nice uh, final touch, I recommend getting a little bit finer grit sandpaper and just doing little touch up by hand. So I'm gonna go find some finer sandpaper and we are gonna get to it. Then I will, um, then after I get done with that, I will actually install these and show you guys how easy it is to install or swap the scales and also show you guys the quickest and easiest way to swap the scales. So stay tuned. So this is a good uh, point to clean your area a little bit and all you're going to do you take a little trash can like you might have in your bathroom and a wet paper towel, damp paper towel I should say. And we're knocking it into the trash can and the dampness of the paper towel is going to help get the rest of the dust. vacuum in later all right so you guys can see what's looking like right now before doing any uh, further sanding For the final touches, I have some 220 grit, fold it in half, keep it small. Then I'm going to kind of round it like that. Uh, actually, yeah, 
And now you don't really need to round it. We're just gonna go super light. Go around this outside. Keep turning it back and forth. paper towel and I think we are going to call that good Oh yeah, that feels good. All right, guys, we are gonna call that good. And now, let me show you how to swap these out very quickly. So, I'm gonna demonstrate on this Shaman right here, and I only need two sizes for this one, the T10 and T8. And then on the clip screws of this one, I have aftermarket T8 Torx clip screws, so I don't need a T6, but um, I highly, highly recommend getting yourself a set of these Weha drivers. Comes with T15, T10, T9, T8, T7, and T6. It's like $30 for the set. By far the best Torx driver set I've ever had. I use these every single day. I've been using these every day for over a year. Have never stripped a single screw, never broken a screw, never had a screw that I couldn't get out. Um, no, the Weha Torx bits are not the same thing. These are a million times better. So don't think because you have the bits that, you know, that these aren't any different. No, these are a million times different. Completely different thing. Um, you know, I'm not going to go on and on forever. You know, you're either going to trust me and try it or not. Uh, I promise you, if you do get these, it will change your life. I mean, it, it'll save you so many headaches. So, so much just unnecessary crap that these will literally pay for themselves. Um, so yeah, best Torx drivers in the industry. That's why all... The knife manufacturers, you'll see them assembling knives with these exact drivers. Um, anybody that that has a lot of experience uh, and takes a ton of knives apart and back together, customizing, modifying, all that good stuff, they will tell you the same thing. This, this is the set to get, and these are always linked in the description below. So, whoa, buddy. Now that I have that out of the way, all right, so when you're swapping scales, guys, 
the easiest, fastest way with Spydercos, you wanna do one side at a time. I always change the show side first. Um, it's just easier. You want to make sure that your screws on the opposite side are tight. Uh, the last time this was assembled, it was by me. I know the other side is tight, so I don't need to do anything. You're gonna wanna open the blade. Pop out the pivot screw just like so. Take our T8. Make sure we are sticking the head of the driver straight uh, or square into the head. And boom. We have one scale off. And, then, and with the Shaman, you don't even have to pop the liner off or anything. Just leave it sitting there like that. And we're gonna take these scales. Oh goodness, I hope everything is in frame. Okay, good. And I have to grab little scissors. Definitely recommend these are um, Dubro Racing, uh, little hobby scissors for Lexan RC bodies. Uh, definitely recommend these for cutting zip ties off of your knives versus uh, trying to remove them with a knife. You will uh, save yourself a lot of heartache and headaches uh, if you heed that advice. But, you know, can't save everybody. Somebody doesn't want to heed the advice, you know, hey, sometimes people got to learn for themselves. Nothing wrong with that. And shoot, where is my 91% alcohol? There it is. I wanna clean the Sharpie off the inside of here real quick. Spray that down. Spray this one down. Get ready. Get ready. Now we're gonna take this 220 and just real lightly. We don't really wanna take um, any of the height of this inside of down. I'm really just doing this to move the Sharpie right here. On a lot of scales, the Sharpie will come off much easier. With these being translucent, they do tend to stain a little bit. Another thing that will probably get off is magic eraser without holding it, but I'm not going to be too picky. Alright, let's get it one time. Let's take our light, actually. There we go. Nice and clean. Alright. Make sure no dust got inside of here. Just go. Bada bing, bada boom. Drop this scale on here. And it picked the liner up. That's okay. Line everything up. Compress the compression lock to make sure it's all the way seated. Take my T10 and my uh, pivot screw. It's easy to decipher the uh, pivot screw from the uh, backspacer screws because the pivot screw is flat on top and the uh, backspacer screws are actually rounded. They have a button head. Bada bing, bada boom, just like that. One side done. Take it, flip it over. Pop out this clip screws. Just so you know, guys, I do use Loctite. And you just saw how easy that was. Boom. Pop my screws out. There we go. Ooh, liner. Or Go ahead and wipe this. Wipe the liner. 
and drop the liner back on. Boom. Drop the scale on. Boom. Go ahead and drop our screws in place. Start with the pivot. And I'm just tightening it down snug. And you're gonna wanna depress that uh, compression lock so you're all the way seated. And we already have our screws sitting right there. Ooh. Boom. All right, check for blade play, no blade play. Perfectly centered. Look at that, guys. Oh, baby. And she's still centered. Pretty sweet. What do you think, guys? I'm going to go ahead and pop the clip on. By the way, this is my Cutlery Shop exclusive stonewashed CTS XHP blade steel shaman. Stonewashed is the blade finish. Blade steel CTS XHP. This has a 15 degree per side mirror polished edge sharpened on the KME. My final stone was the 1500 grit gold series diamond plate that comes with the KME. And then this was strapped on basswood with three and one micron gunny juice. Very sharp. And then the hardware is the factory hardware that I just heat anodized bronze or flamed, whatever you want to call it. I like, I'm liking the looks of this though. I might rock this with this setup. I mean, I might as well. Fresh skinny scales, digging the translucent. You can see the liner through there. Um, by the way, shout out to Denise. She actually donated these scales to the channel for this purpose. So big shout out to Denise. Um, much appreciated. She has been a major, uh, big time supporter of the channel. So very thankful for her. Super cool. All right. And then I'll go ahead and pop this in. And I actually got these uh, T8. They're, they're longer than the standard screws. And it's a T8 head, but they're for the clip. I actually got these from my buddy Anthony Griffin. And I believe he, he orders them from uh, some, some website where you can get components to actually build custom knives because he himself builds custom knives. Go ahead and tighten everything down, starting with the clip. Actually should have gotten uh, this screw back here first, but it's not a problem because these Torx drivers are the shit. Have a nice skinny shaft on them so you can get in tight areas very easily. The tip fits exactly, so you don't have to worry about um, damaging the head of the screw or the tip of your drivers. That's why these last forever. They are actually hardened steel. Um, the steel that they use for these drivers is much harder than the steel that they use on their bits. Even if they say hardened on the pack of bits, it's not the same, I promise you. I can't stress that enough. Um, and, the, and this set is actually made in Germany. Not sure if the same applies for the bits or if they subcontract that out and get more of a, a generic bit that multiple companies, you know, probably use the same manufacturer. But these are actually the cream of the crop. Doesn't get any better. So take a look at this bad boy. And... That is beautiful. So 
What do you think, guys? How'd I do? Very comfortable. I'm loving it. Very, very cool. Alrighty guys, so once again, shout out to Denise. Thank you for these scales, really appreciate it. Um, made for a great video. And I hope that some of you find this helpful and that you can uh, successfully do this modification yourself. It is uh, definitely a cool modification, well worth the time that I invested to do it. And it, it's very easy, like I said, guys, especially if you are handy, uh, you know, good with your hands, not a difficult one to do. You can have a completely different feel to your shaman, a uh, different look to it, all for free, just by simply doing the scale modification and then, um, you know, flaming your hardware, sharpening your knife, you know, all those things I did myself. So you can actually uh, make your knives a lot better for a very low cost, next to free. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. Stay tuned, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.